Hey, fearless fundraisers, I'm Dawn Lego. It's time to buckle up for a new episode of Raise Nation Radio, the one and only podcast made to inspire fundraisers like you to continue making impact in our communities, building better tomorrows, and exchanging ideas. So whether you're a trailblazer or seasoned pro, you'll pick up the trends that transform your fundraising. And together, we'll dive into lively conversations and we'll chat with industry-leading fundraisers and thought leaders to explore hot button initiatives and innovative ideas. So stay with us for the next 30 minutes while we inspire you to embrace the future of fundraising. All right, welcome back, Raise Nation community. We're so glad you're joining us um, for another episode of Raise Nation Radio. We love connecting with you on this channel. And uh, we're going to talk coffee today. Now, you're probably wondering, like, how does coffee tie into fundraising and where's Don going with this? Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty cool. It's pretty inv- innovative. And here to help me is Michael Sullivan with the Java House in, I believe it's Carmel, Indiana. And um, we're going to talk all about it. But Michael, welcome to Raise Nation Radio. It's so great to have you here. Awesome. Thank you for having me and, and letting me talk about Java House and uh what we've got going on uh, as kind of a new startup in the last four to five years. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. You know what? Coffee is like one of my favorite subjects. It's my morning, my noon, my afternoon, my evening. I can't get enough of it. Um, and I hear that Java House is pretty special. Our CEO, Steve Johns, um, little birdie told me, actually, it was Steve himself, that it is his favorite coffee at the Java House. And, and that's where you're located, right? It's in Carmel, Indiana. Yes. Yeah, so we have 12, or we're working on our 12th location that'll open up in a couple of weeks at uh, Simon Property Group on the first floor. Uh, that is our 12th location in the state of Indiana. So, but our headquarters are based here in Carmel, Indiana. And uh, we, are, we are a local family owned uh, and operated company, but we have aspirations to get extremely uh, national and worldwide. So we are oh, wow. diligently every day on that because we have, we just want to share, I call it the Java joy with Java everyone joy. out there. Uh, our coffee is so amazingly smooth because of the way we brew it. And so we cold brew our coffee, which means okay. we have these, these vats where we steep our, our grounds in and then we aseptically package it, which means we, it's, it's shelf stable. So we create a concentrated formula instead of, so that we can use this concentrated formula in any one of our products. So we can bring it to our cafes to use in our unique tap systems. We can use them to have a pod, which I hate to say the word, it's, 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 it's a bad word around here. It's the, the K cup word. But yeah, the K- oh, don't say the K word. <laughs> the K word, because ours is similar, but it's a pod and you can peel it open. All right. Okay. And then pour your concentrate in your, and then you can create your delicious coffee with water or milk or milk alternative. And then you can make that hot or you can make it ice depending on how you get your water or milk alternative mm-hmm. source. So it's really unique because it's concentrated. It's shelf stable. There's no grounds. There's no machine absolutely necessary. You just need a water source. So, um, so we cold brew it, aseptically package it, then you can enjoy it hot or iced. Literally, I take a, every morning at my house, my only piece of equipment is a glass tea kettle that plugs in. I warm up my hot water, pour my jaw in, pour a little cream in. You don't even need cream though. I just use the cream for the flavor, but our coffee is so smooth because it's cold brew, takes all the tannins out, takes, and just makes it so smooth. It's the, if, it, if you are a creamer and sweetener person, it will be the first black cup of coffee you will ever enjoy because it is that smooth. I guarantee it. Oh my gosh. So is what I'm hearing, and, and we're going to get to how this really gets into fundraising, I promise our audience, but they're probably all headed to their nearest coffee shop right now because you make it sound just so delicious. I can taste it just talking to you. But is what I'm hearing that I can actually have Java House coffee here in New Jersey? Because I, unfortunately, am not from Carmel, Indiana, but I still can get your coffee. Is that what I'm tell- hearing? It absolutely can yeah. happen yeah. in New Jersey. Okay. And, uh, we are on Amazon. So we are, we are on Amazon. We have an e-com side of our business. So Amazon has different uh, um, 
packaging styles of the our different roasts. Wow. Um, so we I'm, I'm like out. typing. I'm typing yeah. right now. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm ordering, ordering as we're talking. Right, you order it. There's pods. But you there. know what? I do visit. I do visit every once in a while. I'm needed in Carmel because that's where our headquarters are for um, one cause. We have campuses in in Carmel, and I'm gonna. I have to come to the Java House. And you know, just recently, somebody asked to have a, an in person meeting with me. They were like, "Hey, do you want to meet at the Java House?" So the name's coming up. I think your brand is starting to catch on. I, and you're gonna let me know when you, when you come over uh, to New Jersey. I'll be I'll be your first customer. But Mike, let's go back to the beginning. We jumped right in about the best and the smoothest cold brew coffee you'll ever want to taste. But we want to get to know you first. So can you give us the spill the tea? Who's Michael Sullivan? We want to hear, oh no, I should say spill the coffee. Um, we want to hear all about Michael Sullivan and what's your connection with Java House and tell us your story, your journey, and let's get to know you a little bit first. Well, I am a, I'm the director of sales growth for our cafe division uh, and, and that wears many hats within our company. Uh, just, uh, just, I, I, I think what, one of my taglines is just a hardworking dad who, who's, who's trying to take care of his, his family and wife and, 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 and try to give a little joy to, to the people around me. So I think when you have that, I call it a servant mentality, right? I, I think I took a college 30 years ago on servant leadership and where you're trying to be service for people when they need something. Um, that's what we're trying to do here at Java house and, and trying to have the ability to uh, you know, our ultimate goal is that everyone's drinking Java House and buying it. And in the meantime, we're going to try to also support as many uh, kind of leading into some of the things we're talking about today, support some of the organizations that we can we can help with uh, with our, our coffee being on site. If it's in um, uh, hopefully closer to central Indiana at this particular moment, uh, my goal would be to my my long term vision is to be out there in a lot of different markets. Um, you know, I'm an Indiana boy, born and raised. So down from Indy, college at Ball State. Uh, and I was, this job uh, was was looking for uh, an individual that could, could help the, the team uh, navigate the, the next level. So since I've been aboard, our team has been able to, uh, you know, double in size our cafe business. I think we had five or six. Now we're going to be up to 12. Uh, and we are currently actively in some other uh, negotiations for other pieces of, uh, cafes and, and property. So, um, I, 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 if I'm not here working, I'm going to be taking care of my family. I mean, I, wow. they're texting me last night at like six 30, dad, when are you coming home and what you picked them for dinner? I, I, I I'm the, the cook of the house. So Ooh, what's your favorite dish to make? Well, right now, this time of year is just come on, fire the grill up and put whatever we can on the grill. Yeah. So, Get yeah. it on the grill. Sounds good. Okay. Well, now that we know you a little bit, I'm I'm kind of connecting the dots here because um, coffee's an experience, if you ask me, right? Yep. It, it's Absolutely. an experience. It's not just something that we drink. It's an experience. And I do know that it is Steve John's favorite to come to Java House. But now I'm getting really why, because um, servant leadership is certainly Steve's thing as well. He's actually authored a book, um, Fearless, it's called. And there's a good section dedicated to servant leadership. So now I'm getting how he not only loves the coffee, but he loves the vibe going on there at Java House. So that's, that's pretty cool experience to have when you're, you know, sipping your coffee. Um, so let's get into that servant leadership. You have this great idea for nonprofits. And this is the part that, you know, our audience is waiting to hear. Like, why is going on going online about cold brew coffee? Um, you actually will bring your coffee and help, you know, team up with golf tournaments or golf outings at, that nonprofits are having for a charitable purpose or a fundraising purpose. That's amazing, innovative, creative, fun. Who doesn't want to play golf and have their, you know, shotgun with their morning coffee? Brilliant. Right. Tell me about that and how did this all come about and well, how does it work? A couple of years ago, I was working for another company and we would do, we would supply different things. So, and I said, how can we translate that to what we're doing now? So in my past, I did this for an organization, uh, and we were able to, to be a part of, uh, you know, this, this company over 20 years, not a company, it's organization. Uh, and, and I said, how can we translate that to, um, Java house? 
And, you know, most of these golf tournaments are morning time. Rarely are they past 12 o'clock. You, so I've always said, hey, can we get. Hey, well, wait, Co coffee's not limited to morning. So that's. I know, I know. But <laughs> mostly times, if, if there's, if there's other adult beverages being served, I'm in competition with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> so I, I have to now, granted, there's another line. I've got an espresso martini mix that we use as well. So we use oh, our coffee for espresso me. martini. Yeah. That's online too on, on uh, Amazon. So we said, how can we be in front of and support? We want to be in lieu of a, a, some, a lot of people come to us. Hey, can you be a sponsor? Can you be, I will do in-kind donation of our time and labor and efforts to be there. Cups, creamers, coffee, the product, the labor, the test. Wow. Get there, set it up, and then be able to then interact with the, the, the participants of that event. Uh, and then be able to have the ability to uh, then hopefully promote something there, uh, give them a coupon to come back to the cafes or something of, of that so that we can, you know, the, the ultimate goal is is to uh, support the event and then also to be able to uh, have the ability to um, get some brand recognition. Yeah. Grassroots marketing. Win, win. Yeah. Well, I love that because it's all about connections and experiences, right? That's what coffee's about. That's what fundraising about is about, right? And you're really putting it together. I think it's a very generous in-kind uh, donation because there's a lot of work behind that. The supplies, the staff, the the product, right? right. So there's, it, it all, it all comes together, but you're giving a little bit more than that, Michaels. And I want you to give yourself credit for that because you're also helping that nonprofit give an experience to their golfers, Absolutely. right? It's not yeah. just coming to their event and you can't really put a price tag on that. And you're also helping create connection and community. So it's really a donation that's, that keeps on giving in so many different ways and it's brilliant. Um, so how does a nonprofit, right now, what area are you serving? Let's start there. What I would oh. say I would serve two locations. Uh, which would be the metro Indy area. So any of the, we call the, so the donut counties of, of Indianapolis. So if they're listening, they will know what county is a donut county of Indianapolis. And then anything in West Lafayette or Lafayette, Indiana. So we have four cafes up there as well. So anything that kind of supports that, that's where I'm trying to service now. Uh, and uh, we're, we're staying busy. I've got eight interns on our team, I have one head intern, um, and they are usually doing um, one event every couple of days. The other thing too is- One that, event every couple of days, yeah. wow. And then the other thing we're doing too is, is if we can't make the event, we try to figure out how to get product at the event. So that's another thing we can talk about as well in, the, in those areas. Hey, can we do a drop the night before? Or can one of your, volunteers come by and pick the items up uh and and so that we can at least be a part of the event somehow some way all right well if i'm a nonprofit in that area i'm like i have my notebook out so i'm gonna do rapid fire with some questions here um how how like well well well, well let me know let me start this way what are some of the golf popular golf courses there because somebody's trying to put together a golf tournament in their head what are some of the popular golf courses that you you've the ones about? i we've been at lately uh, is woodwind in westfield indiana we've got one called preble pebble brook in noblesville indiana that's two courses uh they hold a ton of golf outings uh we have another one prairie view carmel indiana um those are the three that i feel like i've, I've kind of done numerous events at a it's local to what we do uh we've done one uh, we went all the way to, we did Lafayette because we're up there. We did one with Subaru, uh, was having their big fundraiser for United Way and their big push at one of, we have a huge Subaru plant in, in Lafayette, West Lafayette, and they, uh, doing their big golf outing to, in support of United Way. So we were there as well. Um, so we've done that one that I forget which golf course that was at was one of the golf courses up in West Lafayette, uh. And uh, I would say any, and I'm thinking about the, a lot of public courses, right? Mostly public. Um, we've got Plum Creek, which is down in Carmel. Uh, and then the ones that can handle that volume of a golf outing, right? Having the carts, those seem to be the ones that have that 
uh, advantage point and it's access for us to get there. Um, yeah. Those are the few that I know of that okay, we've been so a that, part of a lot helpful. this summer. Now, do you have capacity issues like, or I shouldn't say issues, but how how many events can you you know serve and how far in advance does a nonprofit need to get in touch with you? I mean, I would be great to get something on the calendar, you know, a month, a couple months in advance. Uh, I would say capacity. Um, we're just, these are all new learnings. This, this, this kind of organically grew over the last couple of months, getting these eight interns in, helping us execute the plan. Um, and uh, so we are literally internally talking, do we need to make these full-time positions or a couple full-time positions? So we're going to find a way to make it happen to continue this, this, uh, this effort. So, because we know it's, it's, as you said, we know it's an experience and, and we know it, it's kind of benefiting both sides of, uh, of the equation. Get ready to take fundraising to new heights with Over the Edge. Join us during the race conference and experience a unique urban repelling event. It's our 20th anniversary, and we're celebrating by offering an exhilarating way to raise funds, meet new donors, and boost awareness. Don't miss your chance to make a real impact. Visit our exhibit booth to experience a virtual repel and go to OverTheEdgeGlobal.com to learn more today. Over the Edge Urban Repelling, changing lives one descent at a time. Visit online and at the conference. Dare to make a difference. One thing I can I can answer the question that I'm going to ask. We're going to get all this information in the show notes, right? How to get in touch, yeah. the link to Amazon if we're enticing people across the country. So we're going to put all of the details in the show notes, but let's just talk about it. How does a nonprofit get in touch with you and make this all happen? What do they, what do they need to do? Well, right now it would be me. So we would probably Michael Sullivan. There we go. Okay. Michael dot Sullivan at javahouse.com. Oh, we're going to get that in the show notes. Michael dot Sullivan at javahouse.com. Got it. Go. That's going right. to be the person you contact. And then I'll probably send on an email. Hi, Michael. Yeah. I want your coffee at my golf outing. Yeah. Let's do this. Right. Yes. There you go. Wow. Okay. So now let's take it from this other, you know, you're putting in time and money and effort and product. And, you know, th there's something that you're giving and it's very generous. What are you, let's talk about what you are expecting in return, because all sponsors for any event, whether it's in kind or cash donation or a match program, whatever the donation is, they're, they're, they're creating awareness. Of course, it's their philanthropic calling. But what would do you need in return for this in-kind donation? I just think it's, it's uh, if, the, if it times out right, it's placement of logo, right? Where that is, how that, into, you know, some of these events have different levels of sponsorship. We can tie a value to what we look at. I could do the math depending on volume of, of who's there. So that's awesome to lay that against um, and say, okay, we're going to, you can be here, here, and here. We sometimes different events have, oh, I'll put a link on my website. I'll put a link on the event website or the, uh, the, the socials, sharing the sh socials out. The Java House is here. Um, those are the ways that they can support us. And then letting us uh, either put things in the carts or have, the, uh, have us give out product. It's not just the coffee itself or we you know some of our, commercialized package goods that we've talked about the pods or we've got some eight ounce uh shelf cool lattes that just cool you just cool those down the fridge later uh those you know we have to give those out those are great so being able to do that or Ooh, put that. something in the carts that's another brilliant yeah. idea but one golf outing we did we had teas made so that we put all the teas in the the tea holders of the golf carts so they said java house and then we were also had our tent there so there, there's a lot that we can do we also have a van and then my events team can split up. One can take the van. One can, you know, bring then go to tents and do other stuff at another uh, style. Fun. This is fun. This is yep. brilliant. I really, I really love it. Um, where any success stories? Like, can you remember a particular um, event that you supported? A, go a golf tournament that you supported? That we just we just just we just, just we just did one. So we're, yeah, we're, tell me about we're, it. We're partners with. Wheeler Mission here in Indianapolis area. Wheeler is uh, it's, it's supply services to uh, the homeless of our community uh, and, and working with them. And they have a, been around for I don't know how many years. And, and we've really gotten into a good partnership this last year with them. And the one that they do, it's a, it's a crazy golf outing. 
they do a hundred holes for homeless. So they're going to, oh, they okay. do a hundred holes. They, nice they're branding. Like, yeah. 730 to like 730. They play a hundred rounds of a hundred holes of golf. And so we were out there from like early morning, serving early coffee. Then we had those bottled lattes. So we're there till like one or two. And we, we were on a hole. They gave us a whole sponsorship with what we were donating. So we were passing out these RTDs. We had morning coffee there for them. I, call, I like to call it registration coffee. So they have registration coffee. And then, and it's just a success. I, uh, she sent us the deck back. I, I think we raised on that day alone, you know, everyone participating. I think it was like $56,000 in one day straight back to the mission. So to do that. Uh -huh. So each golfer played 100 holes? Each, yeah. Each is, isn't golf played. 18 holes or am I? Exactly, yes. Oh, okay. So the math. Okay, yeah. So, so what? I mean, I got to pull my math out. That's nuts, but it's like eight. What uh, is it? Golf. 100. But you know what? That's nice like impact. five rounds. It's like five and a half rounds of golf, right? So five. I and need a half that golf cart and nuts. the coffee. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I really think. I mean, that's pretty very clever. It's a cute brand, right? You know, hundred. It's a cute brand. Um, but you get the golfers going, right? And you created that experience. And so, you know, what happens over a cup of coffee, right? So yeah. and golf, right? So put those two things together, and it's really a beautiful equation. Um, but you know, we do have a lot of, we do have audience all over the country, all over the world. So I don't know, some people in my neck of the woods over here in New Jersey or Florida or Maine or California or wherever you might be, you might be like, oh man, I don't live near a Java house. Well, the first thing we would say is it's coming, right? If it's up to Michael Sullivan, it's coming. But Michael, would you be willing to help somebody out? Let's say that you're not in New Jersey just yet and somebody wants to kind of mirror this idea can you help them out a little bit maybe they can go to their local coffee house it might not be the same as java house called brew smooth and proving but perhaps they can go to their coffee house and try to get something similar going and maybe that could be a good band-aid offering and in, in the meantime yeah absolutely I, I could be a resource for that as well i also if, if there's I, I can we ship and sample product all the time Oh, so, there you go. Yeah. So it so could be Java like, House hey, then. Can we, can we try it? Can we have it in our outing? And, 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 you know, so, you know, I, I've, I've donated it and let people sell it. So it's a proceed back. I think oh, there was yeah, a, there you an, go. An You're just chock did, full of on ideas. Yeah, so, there was an event we did where we put donations welcome. And then we, I think it was 80 bucks. It was a 5k run. And then, uh, it's not just these golf outings. We're at 5k's. You know, we're at these, these where there might be a charitable thing going on with that 5k and we put down, I think it was a hundred bucks or something we made. We gave that back to the event uh, for these scholarships for these two, two young men that had passed. So they oh. give scholarships back to the high school. So, uh -huh. um, so that's what we, uh, could, you could also do that. Hey, I'm going to sell coffee at these events and it could be donated as well at this time. Were you a former fundraiser? Did you, did you, were you on a development team at some point? Cause these are brilliant ideas. Um, no, nope, not at all. Just, not, just entrepreneurial mindset. To think there you go. I and, love it. So you really can be in New Jersey and still benefit Java House. I love the idea of monetizing it. Yeah. Right. So just call Michael, say, Hey, I have this event, not in Carmel, not in the indie area, but yeah. how can we work together and we can figure something out. You can monetize yeah. your coffee. That's a great idea monetize it, say, Hey, this is, and you can, whatever value you think it is, if it's uh, what's well, going to be, we need to be a dollar, $2, $4, you know, whatever drives that to get that extra, I call it a value add to the, to the event, whatever event that would be. Right. So mm -hmm. that wow. could be a yes. value add. It's certainly cre creating that experience and, and that's all the value add you need these days. Right. Cause I think supporters, donors, golfers, guests, they're all looking, you know, for, for an experience and a quality experience. And it sounds like Java House is um, helping produce that. So this has been so clever and so creative and so brilliant. I, I just love it. Um, before we wrap this um, Raise Nation Radio episode, I, where, where, what, what's the next five years bringing? What's your vision? Where, what are your goals? Where do oh you see goodness. Java House in so, five years? So our, our company is, is led by our managing partner, Michael Moe. 
and then our CEO, Ted Gelop, who is, who is the entrepreneurial at heart. Uh, and I, I think you'll see us uh, five years from now, you'll see Java House at pretty much every grocery store as well. You'll, we'll continue the Amazon uh, lift. We'll continue building our cafe brand and saturate markets uh, where we, we see that our brand is needed. Um, and, you know, we have, I'm not kidding you, we have like eight business units. So all those business units growing, uh, you know, from our Any restaurants. franchise opportunities or not yet? There could be. We're not there could yet. Be. You're not there, there could, yet. Okay. Not there yet. So now you got my entrepreneurial yeah, sphere yeah, going. We're, we're, we, so can you talk to the powers that be and prioritize New Jersey? So, cause I, you know, I, I could use a Java house over here real soon. Absolutely. We'll take a look at it. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to have to ask Steve for some, you know, travel opportunities so that I can come visit you over there in Carmel. Yep. Uh, this has been delightful. I really love the, just the brilliancy behind the suggestion and just, you know, walking hand in hand with the nonprofit community and helping them grow their impact in a very clever way, um, but a fun way. And, and certainly the way fundraising is taking place right now, which is building that community and connection. And there's nothing better than a coffee house to do that specifically Java house coffee. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. And I will be knocking on your door. Now I know um, why Steve Johns loves Java house so much. Uh, Fearless fundraisers, that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's Raise Nation topic. And really, when we say daily dose of fundraising inspiration, that's exactly right. A daily dose of fundraising inspiration. Tune in for a new episode release every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. That's Thursdays, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time for new releases. But we do stream on all the favorite podcast channels. We are on demand at onecause.com and we are on YouTube. So you can follow us and this way you'll get notification about all of our new guests. I would like to thank our sponsor, OneCause, for making this episode possible. OneCause is driving the future of fundraising with easy to use digital fundraising solutions that help nonprofits connect with donors. Check it out at onecause.com and peace please be sure to visit the resource tab while you're there because there is a complete catalog of content that hopefully you'll find helpful. A huge shout out and thanks to my guest, Michael Sullivan from the Java House in, based in Carmel, Indiana, for sharing a very expert and authentic voice about brilliancy in fundraising. So um, be sure to call him and get your dose of Java and um, hopefully your community connections and impact will grow um, as we're going to watch the Java house grow. So Michael, thank you again for being uh, with us today. I so enjoyed this conversation, but I have to ask any last words of inspiration before we close out? I think you nailed it on the head. I think it's, it's, I think everyone should experience coffee. And when they do that this week, we've got a holiday week call out to somebody you haven't talked to in a while, business partner, friend, meet for coffee, have an experience. I don't care if it's Java house or not. And just spread that Java joy this week. As, Java joy. Uh, we're, we're, we're in that we're in the middle of the year and let's, let's really spread some Java joy, find someone and have that experience with them. So we can, can continue to connect with coffee and spread the Java joy. Yeah, there you go. I think we just coined a new uh, slogan, meet for coffee, have an experience. Well, I'll be looking for Java House in my neck of the woods, hopefully soon. Please let me know. But in the meantime, when I head over to Carmel for some meeting that I'm going to hope somebody on the team makes up real soon so I can travel, um, I'll be sure to visit you then. Thank you again so much for being with us today, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's a wrap. Until next time, I'm Don Lego. This is Raise Nation Radio. You stay fearless out there.